Welcome everybody to the Super Joe Pardo Show. I'm Super Joe Pardo, and this is another Biz Coach Reacts video. Wait for it, The Profit Planet Popcorn. If you haven't watched part one yet, go and click the info card at the top here, or in the description, you'll see uh, links to all of the part one through uh, five. Anyway, <clears throat> before we get started, I need you to smash that like button for me for the YouTube algorithm so that other business owners, other entrepreneurs, and your cousin Billy can learn more about business and avoid the mistakes that these business owners are making. Anyway, I am ready to get started. Let's go. Thanks a lot. Charla? Yes. How are you? I brought a friend of mine. His name is Greg. Greg, this is Charla. Hi, Charla, good Greg. to meet you. Greg, nice to meet you. Greg has done a forensic accounting for me on a number of deals. I brought in a forensic accountant to really dig into the books so that I can find out why there's $300,000 missing. I Not just an accountant, but a forensic accountant. Somebody who is going to tear turn this place upside down and figure out where the money went. Obviously, it's a cash business, so I have cash all the time because I have to create tills for all my registers. Right. Right. So I will withdraw money out of the account, meaning Here's boxes of quarters. There you go. In case you want to take a bag of cash. Right, right. See, cash is the most valuable asset that is the most liquid asset. Sure. So you have to have more, the most control over your cash and your cash flow. Okay. And frankly, if you don't have control over your cash, uh, you may be losing cash. So, oh, yeah. So let me uh, ding, 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 ding. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, you guys, so this is... Income statement for 2011, $67,000. Okay, so that's positive. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Then in 2012, Charla, mm -hmm. you made $319,000. Okay. Here's what's most alarming. There's the cash balance as of December 31st. There's no cash. Mm -hmm. it, it's, you could see why it's alarming to me. Well, so here's my question. Firestone Financial is who finances my cards. Okay, under liabilities, you don't see that anywhere. And I pay it every month. Where's the money coming from? Out of the bank account. Then it would then it would adjust on here. I think I think it's it's ending up here. Look at this. Eighty thousand went here, so you went from eighty six thousand dollars to one hundred sixty two thousand dollars. Okay. Okay. Here's the problem though. We actually expect more profit because it was miscoded, which means the income would be higher, not lower. Exactly. Right now our expenses are overstated, so we expect a lot more cash. So cash is leaving somewhere. What the forensic accountant found was that there were entries that were wrong on the books. The Oh, of course. I mean, that that's not surprising. Look, not everyone's going to be the best at accounting or especially if uh, I forget what they got. Casey's uh, not necessarily an accountant, but he just kind of fell into that role. Uh, you know, there's going to be mistakes. And that's why you, you have to have a, you know, you have to have an accountant of some sort, uh, somebody who's going to be the accountant, but then have an accountant who actually is an accountant, you know, go and check over the books and ask questions like, like this guy's actually about to do. actually discovered that the profit is even $80,000 higher than we thought, which means there's $400,000 missing, not three nineteen. Oh, man. Money went somewhere. You're not, probably not ever going to be able to make me understand this. That's why I hate math. Just, just take one year and say, if you're a cash business, you, yeah. you got a dollar in cash. Sure. And you, in fact... Write a $2 check, you're in debt. No, in this case, you didn't. You had, you wrote a 40 cent check. So we're expecting 60 cents in of cash. Right, I agree. Okay? In this case, we're expecting $300,000 in cash because you're a cash business. Right, but there's okay? not $300,000 left over after the year. And that's, that's the big mystery right now. The money should be there because there are no distributions, no draws, right? Well, there's no distributions. On the books, <laughs> but I'm sure there is. Because there's no money to distribute. But, it, but you have profit. What's happening is there's leakage somewhere. I don't know if somebody else is stealing or you're stealing. I, I control all the cash. So if anybody's stealing, it would be me and I don't steal. Well, controlling the cash by putting it all over the floor? I don't uh, I don't think that's how you're supposed to keep... Hold on a second. Let me just uh, let me get this cash out of the way down here. And oh my God, it's missing. Where did it go? Oh, I, maybe one of my kids grabbed it. Maybe somebody else just like, ah, you know, no one's going to miss this stack of money. Okay, so where's the cash? Where is the cash? Couldn't tell you. When Greg and I confronted Sharla about the numbers, her response, it led me to believe that she's hiding something. You see the profitability. The cash has got to be going somewhere. 
It would have to be. Somebody's got to be stealing something. Yeah. There's so many potential opportunities. Could, it could be at the till, at the fair, or, or right land, here. Right here or somewhere in between. Somebody has to be stealing from this business. And I don't know if it's Sharla or one of her employees. And when you think back to the cash that was sitting on the floor, it'd be easy to walk away with five, ten, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000. It makes me terribly uneasy. Again, not all at once, but you take a little stack here, a little stack there, skim a little off that stack, a little off that stack, and next thing you know, you're talking about thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars. It doesn't, about it adds up quick. Deal. Would you make this investment if you were me? Uh, no, I would not do this deal. <laughs>
it's a, it's a shame because uh, again, it's not easy to put together uh, you know a business that generates 2.5 million even if you're losing money on that <clears throat> on that money, but uh, just to, to be able to sell anything to that level is is tough. So you know, kudos to her for that. But you know, letting letting what you have now get in the way of where you could be and what you can get to. Is, is 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 such a tragedy like we we as people need to work on uh you know working with other people uh collaborating and and enabling us to have opportunities to grow bigger together and and she just squandered it she just absolutely squandered it it's 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 a shame it it, it makes it breaks my heart charlotte right now i do not want to do business with you because i don't think i can trust you For business advice and extra slash D. Let's see, we're gonna power through here to the end. After thinking about it, I've made my decision. I'm gonna go have a talk with Charlotte. I feel like I came into this business, I thought I saw something really good, a two and a half million dollar business that that could be a $10 million business. Right. And between misleading me about the crepe store. I'm gonna be honest with you. When I brought you here today, it wasn't really about popcorn. This is my vision for a creperie. The flip-flopping on the books. You didn't want me to look at your books 20 minutes after you told me it was okay to look at your books. You need number talking. She knew we were gonna do this, though. Between that, between the cash missing from your balance sheet, and the forensic accountant coming in and telling you it's even worse. Cash is leaving somewhere. I, I control all the cash, so if anybody's stealing, it would be me, and I don't steal. And what really got me was the website stuff. Did you say to me today, are you trying to buy Pop One? Did you ask me that? How was I supposed to know you did it behind my back? But Quite you... frankly, you blew it. I told you that trust and integrity are everything to me. I have to know for sure that the partner that I have has the same goals and the same vision as I do. I'm not going to do business with you. I wish you a lot of luck, but I'm not going to do business with you. Good, and you know what? Good, good on Marcus for for standing up for what he he believes in is right. Again, he has, you know, I, I think in the first episode they talked about 600 different businesses, you know, applied to be on this show and have not just on the show, but to have him come and and be a purchaser of their business and apparently marcus was doing this long before uh he had his own tv show doing it so this isn't like you know his first time ever doing this kind of stuff but you know it, it, it's a it's a shame when you allow things to get in you know cloud your 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 site uh, like I said about like, well, I, you know, I know what I'm doing because I made this amount of money, but like you have money on the floor. Like that's not okay. It's not, it's not okay. It's not okay. And, and I, I feel, I feel, I feel bad for her, but I really feel bad for her mom. Cause she's the one that's going to ultimately uh, pay the price here. If the, if she doesn't write the ship and get the money to, to give her money, her, her, uh, her mom, the money back that she worked so hard to, to have. Planet Popcorn will never be a mega brand like Mrs. Fields or Garrett's Popcorn. And it's because of Charlotte. I feel bad for her mom. She's going to lose her house if Charlotte doesn't change her ways. And those employees that work there, they're going to be out of jobs. But they're going to go, I mean, they can go find something else to do, right? Again, it, it's, it's really Charlotte's mom that's going to pay the price for this. So, uh, so that, that pretty, that wraps that up. Now I went and found, uh, a quick update here talking about the, where they are, where she's at right now. The website is still up. So if I can go to the planet popcorn.com, if we go here, so, uh, it, it, apparently it's only operating online as of, uh, sometime this year, according to this article that was written. Uh, by Rolando, uh, Her I guess Herrera is his name. Anyway, uh, he he talks about, or you know, he mentioned that uh, that as of this, their their Instagram following, their Facebook page, yeah, three hundred and sixty-two people following. Uh, one week ago, they posted this kind of blurry-ish pic. I don't know what that was, but uh, you know, here's a picture of their. Uh, their new, you know, with their new logo on the thing. Apparently, uh, Marcus did strike a deal with her later, 
Uh, so on the show, he was, he was $200,000 for 50% of the business, but later on, uh, I think they, yeah. So he invested $50,000 in plant popcorn in exchange for 40% equity in the company. Um, which is surprising because, uh, invest, you know, usually he wants 50% of the company, <laughs> uh, in, in most cases, but I guess, he was, a, you know, he's. A, I guess the, she humbled up short, uh, shortly after all this because she, she all uh, after the show, she, uh, she lost her Disney, uh, she lost her Disney look downtown Disneyland location. Um, I don't know where it says that, but it, I'm pretty sure I read that she, she lost it shortly after after it but anyway yeah so it uh i mean as it says the uh, company's locations in legoland california and the irvine spectrum stadium our center uh have closed and all sales are now direct through the website so she did get uh other locations in other places uh and eventually got a deal with marcus and is now selling uh the popcorn online and and you know i mean the tins the tins look good right like i, I it's uh, the website looks maybe a little more basic than it did back when he, they were designing it. Uh, but you know, simple is not necessarily a bad thing. So, you know, they, uh, she, she had an opportunity, she blew it and, and ultimately got a, a lot, a lot less, uh, of a deal. And it, it's just a shame when people like, again, put their pride and, and things uh, on the line in times where they should be open, opening themselves up uh, to being coached and, and learning from those people who uh, have generated that, you know, the level that Marcus has and helped the number of businesses that he has. So it's, yeah, you know, let your, let your pride go for a minute and, uh, and humble up so that you can, you can take not only yourself, but your people to the next level. Um, anyway, I'm Super Joe Pardo. If you've been enjoying this series of, of Biz Coach Reacts, smash that like button for me. Get subscribed uh, and make sure to comment below. Uh, what kind of business are you in? What are you going? What do you got going on? What kind of issues are you facing right now that you need help with? And maybe I can help you. Go over to SuperJoePardo.com to learn more about me. Get more videos and everything podcast related stuff and everything over at SuperJoePardo.com. And you, uh, if you want to learn to how you can work with me, go over there as well. If you want to get me on social media, go to at SuperJoePardo at your favorite social media platform. I am probably there. Anyway, I will see you all in the next Biz Coach Reacts. Take care, everyone.